What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping back in with another Destiny 2 Season of Arrivals video. And in this one we are going to speak about loot this season, and specifically we'll be speaking about weapons and armor. So we'll touch briefly on the badge for the season, some of the hidden items you can pick up, as well as briefly covering the armor sets, but then we're going to speak about all of the weapons. Brand new bonuses for this season, there are quite a few to touch on. That'll include all of the weapons in the Umbral Engram, but also the items that we can pick up in the dungeon this season as well. So I hope you guys find the video useful as always, but now let's get straight into it. And we should probably start out right here with the badge for the season. So, of course, we see a bunch of different legendary weapons. And that does include brand new stuff from the event this season, but also reprises like the Ikela Sniper Rifle and SMG, and other World Pool legendaries which have been added to activities. The three shaders, of course, are acquired from the Crucible, Gambit, and Vanguard playlists by completing the quest for the season. And then there is the Enneagon Ship. I believe that's how you say it, but this is a reward from the Prismatic Recaster. And then, of course, three exotic weapons for the season, so the Wither Horde, as well as the Traveler's Chosen and Ruinous Effigy, which is the new exotic trace rifle that we'll get as part of a secret quest. Now though, let's speak about weapons and armor. The armor sets are pretty simple. We have the Moonfang set for each class, and this is the new Daito themed armor set which drops in the dungeon. Those are random drops through various encounters. And then there is the Season Pass set of armor, and you can reacquire this stuff once you've collected it, which can also be done via the Umbral Ingram, and I have a video about how that loot system works, so I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. But the other main set of armor would be the reprised Trials of the Nine Gear, which also drops throughout different encounters in the new dungeon. For weapons associated with the Umbral Engram and the Contact Public Event, we have the False Promises, which is a new kinetic auto rifle. And it's a high impact frame auto rifle, actually capable of getting two new bonuses. So initially Killing Wind, where final blows grant increased mobility, weapon range, and handling for a short duration. But then also Sympathetic Arsenal and reloading after a final blow also reloads your stowed weapons. There is a third new bonus though called Unrelenting which can roll out here, and rapidly defeating targets triggers health regeneration, and Guardians and Powerful Combatants counters more than one kill. And so these are some pretty interesting bonuses here. In the magazine slot you can get extended mag, high caliber rounds, ricochet rounds, and it's worth mentioning that the weapon gets a range stat of 75 at base here as well. And then you can get Underdog, Threat Detector, Overflow, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Feeding Frenzy, Subsistence, or Killing Wind in slot 1 and then Sympathetic Arsenal, Surrounded, Swashbuckler, Unrelenting, Zen Moment, Eye of the Storm, or Rampage in slot 2. The Whispering Slab is another weapon that you can get from the Engram or the Contact Event, and this is a lightweight frame bow, with the main trait bonuses being Quick Draw, Firmly Planted, Hipfire Grip, Archer's Tempo, Killing Wind, or Range Finder in the first slot, and then Opening Shot, Vorpal Weapon, Sympathetic Arsenal, Demolitionist, Unrelenting, or Swashbuckler in the second slot. Of course, Temptation's Hook is already proving to be a pretty popular weapon, also from the same set. And this is a sword with caster frame, a new kind of intrinsic right there, where you can launch a heavy projectile attack, and heavy attacks are stronger with full energy, and also partially bypass elemental shields. This can get Hungry Edge, Enduring Blade, Owned Edge, Jagged Edge, or Tempered Edge, and then Balanced Guard, Burst Guard, Enduring Guard, Heavy Guard, or Swordmaster's Guard, with traits in the first slot of Energy Transfer, Tireless Blade, or Relentless Strikes, and then the second slot getting Surrounded, Vorpal Weapon, Flash Counter, Whirlwind Blade, and On Guard. So some pretty good rolls that you can get on the weapon right there, and of course the archetype in itself is a bunch of fun. But we have the Hollow Words as well, the Fusion Rifle from the set with a Precision Frame, but you can get Projection Fuse, Particle Repeater, Liquid Coils, Ionized Battery, Enhanced Battery, or Accelerated Coils for the battery slot. And then Trait Slot 1 can get Feeding Frenzy, Lead from Gold, Slideways, Quick Draw, Under Pressure, or Killing Wind. And the second slot can get Vorpal Weapon, Surrounded, Sympathetic Arsenal, Unrelenting, Disruption Break, or Backup Plan. So those are the brand new weapons for this season, but there are some reprises which are linked to the Contact Event and Umbral Engram as well. So the first in, last out, of course, a Precision Frame Shotgun, and this one's been reprised. These things also saw a pretty significant damage buff in PvE, which is worth bearing in mind. And it can get Accurized Rounds, Assault Mag, as well as Light Mag, but then you can get Pulse Monitor, Outlaw, Autoloading Holster, Hipfire Grip, and Slide Shell in the first slot, with the possibility of Demolitionist, Eye of the Storm, Surrounded, opening shot or Vorpal weapon in the second slot. Beringer's Memory is another one that's been added back, and of course this is a rapid fire frame grenade launcher. It can get pretty much all of the major barrels and magazines, and then has Pulse Monitor, Quick Draw, Field Prep, Threat Detector, 
Clown Cartridge or Underdog for the first slot with Disruption Break, Rampage, Demolitionist, Autoloading Holster, Shield Disorient or Elemental Capacitor in the second slot. But some slightly more interesting reprises would consist of the Ikelos weapons, so the database actually says they can be found by the Contact Public Event and the Dungeon, but currently they appear to be dropping primarily in the Dungeon, unless we get additional options to get them dropped in other places later on. But nonetheless, the Ikelos shotgun is back, of course. Still rapid fire frame, but now with pretty much all of the major barrel options for shotguns, including Hammer Forged Rifling right there. But then it can get Light Mag, Accurized Rounds, Extended Mag, Appended Mag, Steady Rounds, and for perk slot 1, Feeding Frenzy, Lead from Gold, Firmly Planted, Pulse Monitor, Moving Target, and Thread Detector, with slot 2 having the opportunity to get Trench Barrel still, but also Disruption Break, Vorpal Weapon, Surrounded, Rampage, and Elemental Capacitor. So we could have some potential right there, but the Ikelos Hand Cannon is also back. You can get Seraph Rounds, Accurized Rounds, Appended, Tactical, Extended, and alloy magazines, as well as flared magwell and steady rounds. But then it can roll Genesis, Slideways, Threat Detector, Subsistence, and Triple Tap in the first slot, with Eye of the Storm, High Impact Reserves, Disruption Break, Vorpal Weapon, or Rampage in the second slot. For trait slots on the Ikelos Sniper Rifle, it's now possible to get no distractions, moving target, fourth times the charm, triple tap, or feeding frenzy in the first slot, with multi-kill clip, disruption break, high impact reserves, quick draw, or box breathing in the second slot. And then the Ikelos SMG can get threat detector, subsistence, grave robber, pulse monitor, and dynamic sway reduction in the first slot, with trade slot two having the potential of tap the trigger, disruption break, surrounded, vorpal weapon, or Demolitionist. In addition, a few different world legendaries have been added to the dungeon according to the database, so we're not going to go over every single perk individually right here, although you can see them on screen. And initially, Widow's Bite can drop inside of the dungeon. That's the rapid fire frame sniper from back in year one. We've also got the lightweight frame Death Adder, another voiced weapon right there. And then the Hoosgau, I think that's how we say it, but that was a Soros launcher from year one with an adaptive frame. You can get tracking and cluster bombs. Man, I haven't used rockets for ages. But also the negative space sword, an adaptive frame, can now roll with energy transfer, tireless blade, or relentless strikes. And then the second slot can get counterattack, surrounded, disruption break, flash counter, or whirlwind blade. There are the season pass weapons, so we've got cold denial, and this is the high impact frame pulse rifle. These can be farmed out specifically in Umbral Engrams, or of course picked up in the Season Pass, but trait slots for this include Grave Robber, Feeding Frenzy, Zen Moment, Pulse Monitor, Killing Wind, or Threat Detector, and slot 2 can get Headseeker, Swashbuckler, Unrelenting, Eye of the Storm, Multi-Kill Clip, or Sympathetic Arsenal. The Falling Guillotine is a pretty cool sword, also from the Season Pass and farmable with the Engram. This one has Vortex Frame, where you can launch a heavy spin attack, and heavy attacks are stronger with full energy, also partially bypassing elemental shields. And it can get energy transfer, tireless blade, or relentless strikes in slot 1, with counter attack, surrounded, whirlwind blade, and on guard in slot 2. You'll be able to see some of the perk icons right here for reprise iron banner weapons this season, and the forward path is coming back, but importantly we should point out the two new iron banner perks, so we have iron gaze, this can roll out on either of the Iron Banner reprises for the season. An Iron Gaze massively improves weapon target acquisition at the cost of weapon range, but we also have Iron Grip, and this massively improves weapon stability at the cost of reload speed. And so Iron Gaze is taking minus 40 range, but adding plus 20 aim assist, with Iron Grip taking minus 40 reload speed, but adding plus 20 stability. And the Fool's Remedy Sidearm is the second weapon that will be reprised for the Iron Banner this season. And so that right there, guys, is a look at all of the weapons for the season, all of the new bonuses, the kind of standout ones. And I didn't want to go into massive detail about which roles to kind of look out for. A lot of you guys will already have your eyes on certain roles and things like that. So I really wanted to take the opportunity to highlight what the weapons can come with. And so let us know in the comment section any weapons that you're going to be chasing down immediately with the launch of this season. But guys, if you have enjoyed the video, a rating below also really helps me out on the channel. But if you're new around here, feel free to hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date with the world of D2. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.